This video follows on from the previous three videos where we have a river with a, a flow rate of 3.36 meters cubed per second that's three meters wide. The difference with this example from the last three examples is that the initial flow depth is now 0.2 meters, not 1.9 meters. So the initial flow depth of our river is now 0.2 meters high. So the initial flow depth is quite a lot smaller than what we've been dealing with in the last few videos. And the blockage that we're looking at now is also 0.2 meters high. So we're gonna block that river with a step that's 0.2 meters high. So what we can do is use the depth energy relationship to see what's gonna to happen to the flow depth as we go over this step. So the first thing we're gonna do it's the same process we've followed with all of the previous examples. We're going to take the flow depth, we're going to plot it onto the depth energy relationship. We're going to see where that 0.2 meter flow depth intersects the depth energy relationship. So at the point of intersect, we can draw a line down and that will give us our initial specific energy. So the point where our flow depth crosses that black line, I've drawn a line down, and that gives us our specific energy at point number one. So the specific energy at point number one in this flow is gonna be 1.9 meters. So the point at which our flow depth, which is 0.2 meters, intersects that black line, I've drawn a line down, and that gives us our initial specific energy of 1.9 meters. Our specific energy at two, is gonna be our specific energy at one minus the height of the obstruction because the obstruction is subtracting specific energy from the flow. So the specific energy is just the energy in the flow, just the energy made up by the flow depth and the kinetic energy. So that delta Z, that obstruction is actually converting energy from the flow into potential energy and therefore subtracting that energy from the flow. So if our initial specific energy is 1.9 meters, and our obstruction is 0.2 meters high, that gives us a specific energy at point number two of 1.7 meters. So we know that our new specific energy level is gonna be 1.7 meters. So we can start to think about what that's gonna do on our graph. The first thing we can note is that our initial flow depth of 0.2 meters is now super critical. In all of the previous examples, the initial flow depth was subcritical, but in this example, the initial flow depth is supercritical. So we can see that because the flow depth is below the critical flow depth, it's less than 0.5, so our flow is gonna be supercritical. And what we can now do is plot our new specific energy level at two, which is 1.7 meters. So our new specific energy level is 1.7 meters. So if we plotted that on the x-axis, that would be just about here. So what we've done is we've offset the line from our x-axis by 0.2 meters, which is our delta Z. So we've taken the specific energy back by 0.2 meters to 1.7, and that's gonna give us our new flow depth over the obstruction. So if we draw a line back from where our new specific energy level intersects the black line, what we see is we get a flow depth just above 0.2. So our flow depth Y2 is gonna be just above 0.2, so I'm gonna call that 0.21 meters. So our flow depth above this obstruction Y2 is gonna be 0.21 meters. So as the flow comes up to this step, it's gonna increase, and it's gonna to increase to a level of 0.21 meters. The final flow depth, Y3, because we haven't gone through the critical flow depth and our flow was initially supercritical, there's no reason to suppose it's not gonna remain supercritical. So when we take this obstruction away, our flow depth is just gonna to return to the original flow depth. So our Y3 is just gonna be 
back to the original flow depth of 0.2 meters. So for this example, because we haven't gone through the critical flow depth, all of our flow depths have been below the critical flow depth, supercritical flow, our Y3 is going to be 0.2 meters. So our flow depth is going to increase over the bump and then it's going to decrease back to the same flow depth it was before after the bump. So for supercritical flow, if we put a small obstruction in the flow, we'll start out with an initial flow depth, the flow is going to increase over that, over that obstruction and then return to the initial flow after the obstruction. And that's what would happen if we put a small obstruction into supercritical flow.